Welcome to this tutorial on making leads and soldering. Now, many home and project studio owners connect their devices with off-the-shelf leads. And providing the leads are the right ones for the job, this is perfectly adequate. So why would you want to make your own leads? The primary reasons for making your own leads are 1. Cost. If you need a lot of leads, making your own will save a lot of money. Number two, making your own leads will help you learn the theory and practice of audio interconnection. Three, if you make your own leads, you'll be able to tailor them to your exact requirements, especially in terms of length. And finally, four, if you make your own leads, you can learn how to repair them, which will save you a lot of time and money. The processes for making leads are straightforward, but for the best results require a precise order. Number one, planning. This involves determining how long leads need to be and identifying and buying the necessary connectors and cable. Number two, cutting and labelling the cable. Number three, stripping the cable. Number four, soldering the connectors. And lastly, five, gathering groups of cables together into looms. Here are the basic tools required. Thin nose pliers, wire cutters, wire strippers, a sharp knife, insulation tape, temperature controlled soldering iron rated between 40 and 50 watts, solder iron sponge, a desoldering tool, some common resin or flux cord solder rated for around 300 degrees melting point, a mini vise and or helping hands, an adjustable light source, and finally, a labelling machine. When planning your leads, you need to ask these questions. How long do the leads need to be? It's a good idea to make your leads longer than you need in order to accommodate any future reciting of equipment. Are the leads for permanent installation purposes or will they be subject to regular handling? This will help determine the gauge of cable you will choose. Is there a limit to the diameter of the cable the connectors can accommodate? What are the connector requirements? Do you need male and female connectors? Will it be better to use multi-core cable or individual cables? Do you want to use coloured cable to make it easier to identify different types of connections? Sometimes it's a good idea to cut cables longer than required. The nature of a project studio is that devices are constantly being moved around and updated and you want to make sure that your leads are long enough you might want to ask the question, where might this device be sighted in a year's time? Once you've cut your cables to length, it's a good idea to label them about 15 centimetres from the ends. You can label the connectors, but they will be harder to read once plugged into a device. 15 centimetres will ensure they don't interfere with soldering and repairs. Labelling is essential, especially if you are going to gather them into looms. Some forms of cable, such as multicore, have labelling numbers printed on the outer insulation. Stripping cables accurately will make soldering much easier. Firstly, take the cover off the connector, hold the cable against it and estimate how far back the cable should be stripped. Number two, strip the outer insulation. Thirdly, unbraid and twist together the earth shield. Four, look at the distance between the connector's cable grip and the connector's poles and strip the inner insulation accordingly. 
5. Trim the inner cores to length and twist them. And finally 6. Tin the cores. Tinning is an essential part of the preparation process. A thin layer of solder is added to the cables and connector contacts or poles to aid the smooth flow of solder. Here's a run through of the complete process of soldering. Number one, turn on your soldering iron and set it to between 300 and 350 degrees. Around 320 degrees should be fine. If your solder melts quickly at a lower temperature, then use that. If the solder is taking more than half a second to melt, increase the temperature. Number two, wet your soldering iron sponge. Number three, ensure the soldering iron tip is clean. Use the sponge and tin it. Four, push the tinned cable you have prepared through the connector cover. Five, tin contact poles and if available, fill connector pole buckets with solder. Six, if possible, make a mechanical contact between the cable and contact pole. You may need to bend the cores with a pair of pliers. Some connectors have holes in the connector you can push the cores through. 7. Hold the cable to the connector and heat the connector whilst simultaneously allowing some solder to melt and flow over the connection. You should not hold the soldering iron to the connector for more than a couple of seconds. If it takes longer for the solder to melt, your iron needs cleaning or is not at temperature and you risk melting any insulation materials surrounding the core or which electrically isolate the contact. You want to deliver a high temperature to the joint quickly and for as short a time as possible. 8. As soon as sufficient solder has flowed, remove the iron and blow gently to cool the joint you will see the solder's surface change from glossy to matte. 9. Inspect the joint visually and stress test it by pulling on it gently. 10. Inspect the joint to ensure no short circuits have been made with other contacts or cores. And finally 11. Replace the connector covers. You can gather groups of cables into looms by using plastic cable ties or plastic conduit. Cable ties are available in permanent and reusable releasable format. Once tightened, you can trim the excess from the tie with some wire cutters. You can also fit cable strain guides and ties to racks and studio furniture to guide and support cables. The script for this tutorial, with accompanying screenshots, can be found at projectstudiohandbook.com. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or at the website to get instant notification of new videos as they are uploaded. And please do click on the ads of interest to you. We're a free resource and they help to pay our costs. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.